Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this one I believe was asked by Andrew Lane X in Twitch chat uh, who asks why are your imports in that particular style and uh, how do you make sure that they stay in that style and I figured I'd throw this into a video and talk about that. So first let me show you what uh, that style looks like. If we not nano we're gonna use Babby <laughs> even though nano is nearly uh, we're gonna look at uh, what is a file that we can look at today? Client lib? Sure. Yeah, this actually demos this very well. Um, so uh, the style of imports that I use is one import per line. And you'll notice that even if I import two things from the same module, I will split those each into their own line. And uh, you know this, this ends up causing a lot of extra vertical space, you'll see here. Uh, but it has three advantages. Um, and the, the main advantages of this are for merge conflicts. This is the, the primary reason that they're sorted and separated like this. Uh, this means that if two people were to modify or to add an import or remove an import from a particular module, the chance of merge conflicts reduces greatly. And um, I guess I'll actually tell you the, the name of this tool first. Uh, the name of this tool is Reorder Python Imports, which is in here somewhere. Here it is. Um, and it is a tool that I wrote a couple of years ago uh, at this point, and it knows how to, uh, you know, format to this style. It generally has no options, so like this is the only style that it will do, uh, which is great because, you know, <laughs> fewer options, fewer things to argue about. Uh, but let me actually show you an example of that, uh, of that merge conflict and why it you know, is helpful there. So these, these are the things that it does. Uh, it separates the imports into uh, standard library imports, third-party imports, and first-party imports. That way you can easily see at a glance whether this comes from this project or from something else. Uh, so that's what this part does. It puts import imports before from imports. This is completely arbitrary, but makes it a little bit easier to differentiate what type of import you're dealing with. Um, and the splitting the from imports, this is probably the more controversial part of this. And this is the, uh, the thing that we'll be explaining today. It also does some other stuff like removing duplicate imports and a few other things. But the particular thing that we're talking about today is why this style, and this actually shows you an example of when you would hit a merge conflict. Um, so this is actually, in fact, using the typing module. You'll see that these two developers are both adding different typing things to this, this same module. Uh, and this is especially a problem in, in code bases where you have many, many developers working on it. If it's only one developer, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, but if you're in like an open source repository or, you know, in a mono repo or some other mega repo where a lot of people are contributing, this can be a, uh, a problem. Uh, and you'll notice that like these two changes here by developer one and developer two would have caused a merge conflict since they both edit the same line. However, if you split them apart, you'll be less likely to end up a merge conflict. Now, if you know somebody added something directly next to tuple, you would still probably get a contextual version or a contextual merge conflict, but it can avoid it in some cases. So anyway, that's the that's the first reason. Uh, the second reason is it maintains git blame on these lines. So you'll be able to tell like, you know, oh, well, who added this import? You can easily check that instead of having to, you know, traverse through the history to find when the edit to that line happened. Um, and it'll, you know, this this line will blame to whatever change that actually did that. So if we do git blame dash w, I think they all got added in the same commit because I just typed the whole code base at the same time. Um, yeah, you'll see that, you'll see that all four of these actually blame to the same thing. Uh, but if we look down here at the pre-commit util imports, you'll notice that one of them got contributed in this patch and another one got contributed in this other patch. And so I would be able to see exactly what happened and why each of those are separate. Uh, and the last reason is for excluding lint errors. Uh, if you had all of these on one line from typing import any dict optional sequence, uh, it'd say one of these was intentionally unused. So you would put a no QA comment to say, you know, ignore this this unused import. However, this no QA comment now applies to all three of these other names at the same time. And maybe this, you know, is no longer used in the file, but you're silently hiding that warning because this is applying to all four things. Uh, however, in this version, you can just ignore the individual imports that you're, you know, marking as as problematic, and that allows these three to still be checked. Uh, but anyway, those are the uh, three reasons that I do this, uh, and the tool again is called Reorder Python Imports. I will leave a link to this in the description if you want to check it out. And I run it through pre-commit, which is the 
uh, linter code formatter framework that I created. But anyway, thank you again for the question. And uh, if you guys have additional stuff that you want to see, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.